Hey Michael with X-Force PC. Uh, now that we have a fully fleshed out 8th generation processor lineup from Intel, we wanted to do some benchmark testing and see how X-Plane scales across that processor lineup. And so that's starting with the i3-8100 and goes all the way up to the i7-8700K. And so the, the clock speeds I think are start in the low 3's and they go all the way up to 5 gigahertz on, with some overclocking. And so we wanted to see how that performed. We also have one of the new Ryzen 2's, the second generation of Ryzen, the 2600X, which is the high performance 6 core version of the Ryzen 2. They have an 8 core version, but really X-Plane doesn't benefit by having that many cores. So we, uh, we stuck with the 6 core. It's a more apples to apples comparison with Intel as well. So we did the testing uh, two different ways. We first of all did it on a single 4K display like you see behind me and we did it over New York City. This is a short final to LaGuardia, three nautical mile approach. And uh, again, we did that at 4K. So 4K is four times the resolution of 1080p. And 1080p, or in other words, 1920 by 1080, is the sort of default monitor resolution. So we wanted to go a little higher than that. We went with 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. Again, four times the number of pixels as a 1080p. So that's the first way that we tested it. Okay, so the second way we tested X-Plane was on a triple display setup. Now this is not running NVIDIA Surround. These are three individual windows of X-Plane. And you may not know what I'm talking about, but there's two ways to run triple display. One is to use NVIDIA Surround to make this look like one really wide monitor to the operating system and to X-Plane. And that's a lot easier work than what we're doing here. And it also causes some distortion. So when you're not using NVIDIA Surround, you're rendering each of these displays individually. And that's a lot more work to do, but we wanted to do, you know, kind of make this hard. Um, so that's the way we're doing it. Um, even if you look in the Task Manager under uh, Processes, if you look under X-Plane, you'll see there's three X system executables here in the Task Manager. I'm trying to get that where you can see it. Um, so I don't know if you, you probably can't see that because of the camera not picking it up, but there's three X system executables running in the task manager right now. So the second way we tested X-Plane again is running three individual windows of X-Plane. This is definitely harder than a single 4K, even though it's less pixels. And that's because we're rendering X-Plane three separate times. And so you'll see that reflected in the frame rate analysis. Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. One thing I forgot to mention, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to just like drop this video in the middle and it may seem out of place, but I didn't tell you what our performance uh, testing platform was. So we used a Z370 chipset motherboard. Uh, it's a, I think it's a gigabyte we used. But anyway, Z370 motherboard. We had a DDR4 3000 megahertz RAM, 16 gigs. And we used a GTX 1080, and all those come with 8 gigs. And that's what we used across the board. Now, of course, with the Ryzen, we used an X470 board for that. You know, obviously, you can't run that on an Intel board. So I wanted to throw that out there so you'd know uh, what kind of video card we were using and what type of memory. One more thing I'll mention. We did find that going from DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM to 3000 megahertz RAM, actually was about a 5% performance boost. So that was a little surprising. Typically, uh, video memory doesn't make much of a difference, but in this case, made about a 5% difference. Okay, so the first test results we want to talk about have to do with the single 4K display. So when we ran the, the tests on the single 4K, we started um, with the i3-8100 as, I think, the lowest cost chip. And it actually did really well. It had an average frame rate of 37.5. And it actually bested the Ryzen 2 2600X. And the Ryzen 2 2600X came in at a little less at 35.5 frames per second. Then there's an unlocked i3, the 8350K. So the K indicating that it's an unlocked chip. So we overclocked that thing to 4.4 and then went up to 4.8.
and we actually beat a lot of the I-5s uh, by doing so. And I'm not going to sit here and read you all the numbers. You can see the numbers there. We also tested the I-5 8400, 8500, 8600. Those are all locked processors that run in the mid 3 gigahertz range and then they turbo up to around 4 gigahertz. And each one as you go up the chain is just slightly faster than the one before it. Um, we also ran the i5 8600K, which we, that's probably our favorite chip. Um, we ran it at 4.5 gigahertz, which is a little bit of an overclock. That's not a crazy overclock or anything like that. And we got an average of 46. And you can see it beat the i7 8700. The 8700 is another locked chip, so it's running at stock clock speed. And you see the 8600K beat it. Um, and then the fastest chip and the most expensive is the 8700K and we had that overclocked to 4.8 and while it did take the performance crown it did not take the crown for best dollar to frame per second so if you look at that uh, as far as the you know how many how much money you pay versus how many frames you get frames per second you get for each dollar that you spend um, the 8700K actually turned out to be the worst, and the strongest performer was actually the i3-8100. Now, most of our customers prefer to be in the upper area anyway, but it's interesting to see how you're paying a bit of a price premium. And this is based on just the cost of the processor, the chip itself. It doesn't factor in all the rest of the system. So it may look like a huge difference here, but the processor, remember, is only about a quarter of the cost of the total system. So you do have to keep that in mind. So there's kind of a breakdown of the processors running on a single 4K display. Next, we'll take a look at the uh, triple, triple display setup. Okay, so the next test that we did, as I mentioned earlier, is we did three individual windows of X-Plane. So this is 1920 by 1080 or 1080p on each of these displays and each is running in a separate window. We so we're not using NVIDIA surround for this uh, as I mentioned earlier. So I didn't test every single processor because it seemed kind of redundant to, ch to test the 84, 85, and 8600 because there's such small performance differences. But when we look at this, we actually didn't see a ton of variance here. And I guess a lot of it is because all of these are multi-core processors. And one thing I didn't mention earlier that's different about the i3 nowadays versus i3s of the past, the i3s today in the eighth generation are quad-core chips. So they're pretty darn potent chips. And as you'll see here, we did not see a huge amount of variance. Our top performer was the 8700K at 5 gigahertz. Now, we don't even sell it clock that high. We clock it at 4.8. And so that comes in at 41.5 frames per second. Um, then that's right behind that's the 8600K at 39, the 8500 at 36. And then it, we actually saw, as you see here, the 8350K, the i3, the unlocked i3, running at 4.8 and 4.4, actually was able to hang with and best and beat some of the i5s. So that comes out, and that's pretty interesting. So that as far as the dollars per frame per second, uh, that's where we saw a much larger spread. Definitely the best dollar per frame per second you get from the i3 8350K, running at 4.8 and uh, even the 8500 and even the 8600 are pretty good deals and you really pay a price premium if you go to the 8700k and that sort of matches what we've been telling people is you know you're going to pay a price premium with that 8700k and you know i didn't even factor in the fact that we typically use a water cooler so you could actually that bar should be, even be a little bit longer um, because to get that, to maintain that 4.8 gigahertz frequency over an extended period of time, you really need a water cooler, not an air cooler. And so that adds about 75 more dollars to the price. So that makes the 8700K even uh, less of a bargain or not more expensive, not as good. So, um, you know, x 11 performance still continues to be a bit of... Um, 
a challenge to figure out. Um, and I don't know if I've answered a lot of questions here or not, or just raised more, because uh, there's not a huge performance spread between the chips. So to sort of wrap this thing up, what we found is clock speed is king. Um, even when you look at the seventh generation, and of course the eighth generation processors, it's all about the clock speed. Cores, eh, really don't matter that much, especially if you have four. Four is all you need. Once you have four cores, then it's all about the clock speed. And that's how, why you saw the 8350K, the quad core i3, running neck and neck when it's running at 4.8 gigahertz with the most expensive i7 8700K. Again, four cores, once you get four cores, then it's all about the clock speed after that. And that's also why you didn't see the uh, Ryzen chip do all that particularly well because it runs around 4 gigahertz and it can turbo up to 4.2 and that's one of the lowest clock speeds of course in this whole lineup. Hopefully that helps you understand you know the uh, X-Plane 11 performance a little bit better.